Welcome back everybody. My name is Randy. Of course, you're watching the Five Five Garage. And today I will be continuing on with my intercooler project and I will show you and tell you reasons why I'm making some changes. So if this is the first time you're watching this channel, I'd like to say welcome. And somewhere around in here will be a link to a playlist that shows the previous mods I have done to this car, which is a 2010 Mazda Speed 3. But if you've been following me from day one, if you've been following me on Instagram, if you've been following me on the website and Facebook, if you have been following the channel, and you should be following the channel. The last modification I made to this car was installing a front mounted intercooler setup from CX Racing. Now, one of the setups that people will perform on this car when they're adding a the front mount intercooler is to get the CX Racing pipes and to get a Treadstone front mount intercooler. But I wanted to use the intercooler that came with the CX Racing kit just to see how efficient or not efficient it was compared to some of the other choices that are available. And I did some logging and I'm going to share that information with you guys. So one of the things I noticed after I installed the CX Racing kit was one, um, I didn't experience the same amount of heat soak that I was experiencing with the top mount intercooler because the core is down in the front of the car. Um, as soon as you get moving, the temperatures will drop. They will drop faster than when you have top mount installed. Now, the problem that you'll run into when you're running that CX racing intercooler is it's not very efficient. Um, I noticed on the days where it was really hot and it got into uh, the 90s here for a strong week. So I was able to do logging for multiple days. And one of the things that I noticed is that under normal driving conditions, that intercooler will work fine. Um, I am tuned. We'll get to that in a later video. But um, I, one of the things I noticed is after a couple of very strong pulls, this intercooler cannot keep up. And uh, under normal driving conditions, I can get going, get the airflow going through it, and I can get my temps to go to almost ambient temperature. But if you're doing some spirited driving, um, the cooler can't keep up. After you've done a couple of good, strong pulls, um, you'll find it's very hard to get the temps to drop back anywhere near ambient. I was seeing temperatures 10 to 15 degrees warmer than ambient um, and that is even after driving it for a while and not really getting into boost attempting to try to get that core to cool down so um, after a while of doing that I decided to go ahead and swap out that core for a larger core and the one I decided to get is from Mishimoto Automotive and this is the core I decided to go with this is Mishimoto's S-Line core, and I noticed that a lot of people, when they put these on their Mazda Speed 3s, go with the M-Line, and it also comes in that cool gold coating. But um, I decided to get the S-Line because this actually uses a bar and plate setup instead of the fin setup that is on the M-Line. The bar and plate setup should be more efficient. Um, it's similar to the setup that Treadstone and some other intercoolers use. So I decided to go with this on the front of the car. Now, when I get the old one out, I will show you guys and you can see the comparison sizes of between the two cores. This one is much bigger, but that also means it's not gonna fit with the stock crash bar. So I had to order a couple of other things to ensure that I can get this to mount up without any problems. And to solve the issue of getting that larger intercooler core to fit on the front of the car, I decided to get a crash bar from James Barone Racing. Um, this is bar set up to be used with a treadstone, but I'm going to see if I can modify it so I can fit my Mishimoto core to it. And one of the reasons I decided to go with this crash bar was because the JBR bar still has it, so I can use my license plate holder and it comes with all the hardware necessary to install this into the car. So I've already taken time to remove my front bumper and I got everything exposed. So I can go ahead and start with removing the CX core and remove my old crash bar. 
If you're interested in the differences between the two intercooler types, I will have an article written up using the research that I found when I was researching doing this mod on my website, 55garage.com, so you can read up and you can kind of understand the difference between the two and hopefully it will help you make uh, the right decision when you decide to upgrade your intercooler. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started and start ripping the car apart again for the second time. All right, as you can see, I got the JBR crash bar. Uh, it's fitted, but it's not fully installed because I'm going to have to do a bit of custom work. Um, I've already tried to test fit the intercooler, and the first thing I notice is, is that this, this lower splash pan, um, you're going to have to do some trimming. Now, I just use a Dremel, and from before when I trimmed it back to fit the CX Racing intercooler, now I have to trim it off even more. And I can see in this section, I've already went ahead and trimmed this down. I'm probably going to trim it a little bit more, maybe take some sandpaper or something, kind of smooth this out a little bit. And then I'm going to cut it on this side. And then hopefully when I fit the intercooler back in, it'll sit flush. And then I can mark my holes in the new crash bar where I have to drill in order to be able to mount this up properly took my Dremel and I cut down uh, that plastic trim that's at the front and got it as low as possible. I didn't want to actually cut into the splash pan, so I did leave a little bit of a ridge and then I took the sandpaper and kind of knocked down the high spots. Um, I saved you guys, <laughs> I saved you guys from having to watch me sit here with hot plastic streaming all over me and me using a couple of choice curse words. But, um, I know no one's really going to see this from the outside of the car, but I know it. I, you know, I'll know about it, and you know that's what matters. I want to try to do it as best a job as I can because I plan on keeping this car for a while. So, next thing I'm going to do is test fit the intercooler again, see if I can get the sit flush, and then I can start taking my measurements so I can start drilling some holes so I can mount this thing properly. All right, so I went ahead and made my marks. I know you can't see it because I had a sharpie and the bar is black but trust me the marks are there so um, the next step is I need to drill my holes and thankfully I have the right size drill bit for this and I'm just going to drill straight through all the way through and I got some WD-40 I'm going to spray the food to make sure that the uh, cutting bits stay lubricated and it shouldn't take too long okay so now I've got my holes drilled in the JBR bar and now I'm going to formally install them now, you cannot use the uh, hardware for the stock crash bar because the outer bolts are not long enough. But thankfully, the JBR kit comes with all the installation hardware that you need to install the bar to the car, as well as it comes with the mounting brackets for the TR6, TR8 intercooler. But unfortunately, I'm not using that one, so I had to come up with something custom. When you go to install the JBR bar, one thing you'll notice is the stock hardware is not long enough on the ends. This bar is straight, whereas the stock bar, crash bar is curved. So in the hardware, JBR supplies new bolts and these aluminum spacers. And you use these, like these, on the two ends in order to secure the bar properly. And then you can reuse your stock hardware on these inner bolts here and the two holes here and as you can see these are slotted so it allows you to get everything adjusted just right before you do your final tightening down sequence Okay, I'm back. I had to make a quick run to the auto parts store. 
in order to get the mountain hardware. And for those who are wondering, these are M8 by 125 uh, grip hitch. And these should work great. Yeah. <laughs> Got the crash bar mounted, got the intercooler mounted, and I might have to fudge a little bit with that to get it to fit when I put the bumper back on. But now I can go ahead and finish up lining up the crash bar and securing it to the chassis. Okay, so I got the crash bar installed and I got my intercooler installed. The next thing I need to do is connect my intercooler piping to my intercooler. That's where I made a mistake because when I went to order these, I knew that I needed to get a three inch to two and a five, two and a half inch adapter, which I did. But I forgot that I needed it to actually be an elbow instead of just a straight coupler. So I need to run inside and order those. And so I'm going to stop the video here and I will pick this video up when those come in. Okay, so we're back and here's an update. So thankfully I got in the three to two and a half inch couplers that I needed. So I got all that all bolted up. The bar took some major massaging and the reason why is this Nishimoto core is actually taller than the treadstone core that the bar was designed for so I had to do a bit of modification and when I mean a bit of modification I did a lot of modification but I was able to get it installed now I actually have it raised up to where the bottom of the intercooler now sits inside the splash pan so I won't have it sticking out or anything and so now all I have to do is put the car back together make sure that everything fits and then check for boost leaks so I'm gonna get started on that okay after a lot of finagling some choice curse words and a bit of Dremel use I was able to get the bumper cover back on I have the intercooler installed it was a lot of work um, if I was to do this again I would probably just break down and make a custom uh, crash bar I might even later on Take this back apart and redo it if i do it that way i will make a video for you guys so you can see exactly what all i did um sorry this video was kind of in bits and pieces also sorry about the chainsaw noise um life kind of got hectic there for a while and i had ordered this stuff a while back and then didn't realize that i did not finish ordering the rest of the pieces that i needed to do the complete installation so i had to break it up across a couple of days but i'm pretty eager to get the car down because um, I'm dirty, the car is dirty, my garage is dirty, and I really wanna kinda of straighten this stuff up and go take this for a spin. So as you saw in the previous clip, I got the car put back together. Um, I did have to wait on a set of three inch to two and a half inch uh, silicon elbows so I could finish that installation. I did not realize it at the time, but when I ordered that Mishimoto intercooler, it actually has three inch outlets in the CX racing kit came with two and a half inch outlets and when I ordered that intercooler I completely forgot to order the reducer elbows so I had to wait on those and that was why it took a little while to finish this video but I got everything done I got everything put back together um a couple of little hints that I will drop to you guys if you're planning on doing this if you would have used, if I would have used, excuse me, a Treadstone intercooler, this installation probably would have been much more easier because that JBR bar was designed to be used with a Treadstone intercooler. And I'm using a Mishimoto, so I had to do a little bit of custom work. I had to do some cutting. I had to use some dremeling. It took me a while, and that poor JBR's crash bar went through multiple modifications in order to get it to the point where it is right now. Uh, if I were to do this again, and I probably will do this again, I will think I'm just going to buy the materials and just weld up my own custom crash bar. And if I do that, I'll probably do that in a future video. So 
If you're interested in seeing video like that or any of the other videos I'm getting ready to put out, make sure to click the subscribe button and to click the little bell so you will not miss a video the minute that it drops. So hopefully today you learned something and if you did, as always, make sure to leave me one of these on the video. I got some more videos that are dropping this week. I had a personal issue that ate up a lot of my free time. Um, I talked about it a bit on my Instagram and thankfully things have gotten much better on that front. So I should be able to kind of pick up my schedule where I left off with the car video. And if you aren't already, make sure you are following me on Instagram. Sometimes when I'm not making videos, I'm still doing content on there. Be it I'll do pictures or sometimes I'll do little stories. So it's something to kind of fill in the gaps in between videos. As well, also make sure you're checking out 55garage.com because when I'm not making videos, I may be writing articles. I got a blog on there. I have some how-tos. I'm currently working on a how-to to install some six-speed horns, which I did in I did during this, but I didn't film it because I felt like it would be much easier for me to write it out for you guys. And that will be on the website as well on the website you can click the shop link to the 55 garage swag shop and order yourself one of these sweet t-shirts the first run of the shirts are in and i am really excited about them i have been wearing them all week driving people crazy but i am also working on some new designs and i got some new ideas for things so make sure that you check out all that stuff on 55garage.com so it is getting into the late evening I have been working on this for a couple of days. I am dirty. The garage is dirty. The car is dirty. So I'm going to clean up all those things and then I'm going to take the car for a spin and then try to enjoy the rest of my Labor Day weekend. I hope you all are enjoying your Labor Day weekend as well. And I will see you guys on the next one.